Hello, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about firstly some of my sort of personal journey in this space of trying to inject knowledge into uh, machine learning models and uh, dialogue agents and uh, sort of the end of the talk has a, a bit more technical um, recent work. Uh, so back in 2014, myself collaborators were thinking, oh, memory and models, it's not really that good. I mean, you have things like LSTMs, but I mean, sort of normal neural networks, the idea was mostly, you know, they had to sort of store all their knowledge, everything they needed in their weights, right? And you still have something like TP GPT-3 today, sort of doing that as well. Um, so sort of LSTMs were maybe a little bit different. They sort of tried to sort of read um, the uh, sequence and try and store that in their sort of memory. But the memory was just a sort of tiny state, like a vector that was like woefully small. And um, yeah, so we, we started working on uh, memory networks. So we were just sort of like, oh, let's try and like general idea is bolt an external memory component and there's sort of other methods and sort of people called the, that family or class of models, memory augmented neural networks. And, uh, and then sort of, you know, the neural network could have this extra memory that had uh, knowledge in it. Of course, there's a lot of different ways of doing that. But then we sort of thought at the time, okay, that needs not just memory, but you need to be able to use that memory, right? So you need like reasoning and attention uh, over that memory in order to use it. And, you know, a, a lot of those memories sort of that we consider were basically involved uh, memories that are documents. And so sort of that's the link to uh, this workshop today. But we call that reasoning attention memory sort of RAM there. And uh, back in 2015, we sort of organized a workshop uh, for that, try and get people sort of excited in this area and um, get more people working in this area. So at the time there was, yeah, things like neural tree machines and memory networks and just starting to be like the first kind of attention based uh, models that were sort of starting to attend over. Um, I mean, it's sort of guess kind of started with Badenow's work. It was sort of only attending over a source sentence and then, you know, sort of extending that, okay, let's attend over documents and uh, then try and retrieve and attend over documents, right? Which is sort of what we're doing uh, more today in uh, question answering and, and uh, we've been trying to apply to dialogue. Uh, we had some questions at the time in the workshop how to decide what to write and what not to write to a memory, how to represent it. Should it be hierarchical? Do you need to forget? And I think uh, some of these questions are still relevant today as open problems that we could work on. And uh, in the wider context of sort of reading documents and having a, a memory, I think going forward past this workshop, I'd like to see still more you know, more uh, future technologies built that actually have uh, memories that are uh, more than just retrieving documents. Like we need to be able to read those documents, understand those documents and sort of work that into uh, the memory and understanding that models have. Um, but yeah, still a little bit of history. Uh, so yeah, we had end-to-end um, uh, -end memory networks that were stacked layers of attention and um, with query and key embeddings and position embeddings and neural network layers between uh, the attention layers and stuff like that. And we kind of show that, yeah, some short stories or in language modeling tasks, those those models could sort of do some kind of reasoning um, through those stacked attention layers. They could do the attention and um, then they could somehow read some uh, some text and uh, answer appropriately. And sort of, you know, since then, uh, transformers have really improved on that recipe, still using stacked layers of attention and position embeddings, things like that. But, you know, adding things like multi-head attention, self-attention, um, normalization, and non-linear feed forward networks be between the attention layers and sort of, really taken those things uh, to better results. And um, 
sort of, you know, since, yeah, 2017 and 2018 with Transformers and BERT, uh, we, we have something a bit better to be able to use as a core to, you know, now maybe look back again and keep improving on the uh, memory component. And, uh, you know, but still not in all our models, as I mentioned, we're doing that yet. So even, you know, some of our most lauded models, such as GPT-3, you've got um, still basically just a big transformer, right? With no um, memory augmentation. So I have this example on the right-hand side of GPT-3 um, describing Kun Yong Cho, a professor at NYU, and uh, it, you know, hallucinates a whole bunch of knowledge. Like it says he's an ex-Go champion and he's actually at Google DeepMind. We put in yellow here the, the uh, hallucinations which is actually quite a lot of the text. And similarly, GPT-2 before it, uh, there was sort of examples of people posting funny things like a cat has four kidneys here when, when you ask it to complete. And, you know, just scale, basically going from GPT-2 to GPT-3 is not solving these problems, right? We need to have memory. And one way of doing that is uh, using using documents. Um, so actually in our first memory networks paper, we kind of already had some hints uh, of how to deal with this problem in 2014, because we had some uh, experiments where we had like a hashing over uh, a bunch of documents and then trying to show that it, um, it could help in uh, question answering. Uh, but I think, yeah, that wasn't really um, sort of mainstream until we sort of, you know, did similar things, but on um, more standard question answering tasks, such as uh, Squad and uh, some, some other data sets as well with Dan Chi and uh, Antoine and Adam in uh, our Dr. QA paper which um, yeah, basically bolted onto uh, a document reader, a document retriever, uh, and, um, and use that to uh, attend over the, the retrieved documents to answer the questions. And since then, there's, I would say there's been, uh, I mean, although that wasn't a completely new idea, it was just kind of taking, taking that into the sort of neural age and, you know, sort of, um, trying to yeah make a, a neural model be able to read those retrieved documents and bolt them together that kind of uh, did inspire further work in that area and then after we did that um, I've been working particularly on dialogue models uh, so not just question answering being able to you know generate in the open domain and but still try to have this um, knowledge power generation. So we worked on uh, something called Wizard of Wikipedia, uh, where we crowdsourced a data set with around 1300 uh, diverse topics. And we asked one of the crowd workers uh, to sort of be curious and learn about that topic. And, and the other crowd worker, we gave them access essentially to uh, a kind of um, a retrieval of documents over Wikipedia using a TF-IDF retriever. And we asked them to use that knowledge from Wikipedia. And so after collecting that data set, we could then uh, use this data to um, try to hence train a transformer that would uh, have this IR system bolted onto it as well, right? And, uh, and then we showed that this could, um, inject knowledge into the model and so that it could um, speak knowledgeably ab about these topics i mean as well as just sort of going beyond question answering but for general dialogue um, but yeah uh, since since those dates so in 2020 uh, now um, you know technology is going forward and better methods coming out and uh, you know, I guess, and in this workshop, I'm sure there's new methods as well. And uh, excited this area is progressing. And uh, yeah, a couple of methods I wanted to uh, mention here because I, I use them also in this talk for dialogue is a RAG, a retrieval augmented generation method that basically sort of gets rid of the, um, the 
uh, sort of classic TFIDF IR component bolted onto the transformer and replaces it with, with a neural model, so the DPR model, uh, dense passage retrieval model, which is in itself a transformer and uh, sort of does that neural in the loop retrieval, which gives better results. And then there's the FID uh, fusion in decoder method as well, that's relatively recent, uh, which is also performing quite well. And both of these methods are um, uh, near state of the art or state of the art. I'm not sure these days, lots of numbers coming out. Um, but on my side, uh, I'd kind of been uh, working on open domain chat, as I said, and um, in 2020, we also came out with uh, Blenderbot. So that's, uh, uh, well, there was various flavors of it, but one of them's a 2.7 billion parameter transformer that's pre-trained on Reddit and then fine-tuned on these uh, crowdsourced data sets, such a wizard of Wikipedia. But without the memory component, the model that we released doesn't have the uh, memory augmentation bolted on. So it's still just a transformer. Um, and while we show that that model was quite engaging, so it outperformed uh, Google's MENA and also Dialogue GPT uh, from Microsoft in uh, human evaluations, uh, it still suffers from uh, hallucinations. So uh, here's a couple of examples. What do you know about Amon Tobin? What, Amon Tobin? What do you know about Wojciech Zaremba? Uh, so Wojciech Zaremba is a researcher at OpenAI and Amon Tobin is a Brazilian uh, musician. It just sort of confidently gets those wrong. So, you know, we kind of re-released Blenderbot 1 and it's like, oh, this looks really cool. It's like a state-of-the-art open domain chatbot, but we need to go back and bolt um, bolt the memory and the document reading back into it again. And so sort of that's something I've been uh, doing recently. Um, you know, sort of general to these models, you can also take BART and only train it on Wizard of Wikipedia. And uh, sort of that's what we do in, uh, in our experiments using BART as a base. In the next slides, uh, you can see it says things like Thierry Henry, who's a famous French footballer, it says he's an English player. Although he did play for Arsenal, and maybe that's that's what confused it, and so on. You can uh, see many of these examples. So yeah, our recent work uh, reducing um, hallucination in conversation looks at using these retrieval augmentations um, in these uh, state-of-the-art models. So um, yeah, I've already talked about some of the failings of these large language models that um, they they basically have to store the knowledge in these weights. Not only that, it's static, right? They only can remember anything that was trained at the time. Um, so we're going to introduce retrieval in the loop uh, into, into some of these models. We're going to use BART first and, um, and see, see if that helps. So we're going to use these two methods I mentioned, RAG and FID. Um, I guess I already talked about how they work to some degree. Uh, I guess that I didn't fully explain. Basically, uh, RAG has a sort of end-to-end -end training um, uh, that it can actually train the, the neural retriever end-to-end -end as uh, to be good at generating the final sequence, whereas FID doesn't actually do that. It has a, it does use a neural retriever or it can use other kinds of retrievers, but what it does is it encodes all the documents independently and attends jointly in the decoder. That's why it's called fusion in decoder. And the retriever isn't trained, but it actually ends up working quite well. And we're going to consider those two methods. Um, so they were shown to work great in QA, but do they work in our dialogue setting? Um, so there's some issues here. Dialogue has a longer context. It's not just a question. And um, you need to sort of support this knowledge. Uh, you need to use this knowledge, but also it should support carrying a conversation. So you're going for sort of factuality and engaging this, right? You're not just outputting a short, say, span as you are in squad. Um, uh, and yeah, so, so it needs to balance these two things. So we're going to look at so some yeah some sort of technical improvements to those architectures and see if they help. 
So in the dense passage retrieval, uh, which is used in uh, RAG, there's basically uh, a bi-encoder type uh, transformer model where you um, basically do a dot product between the uh, document encoding final uh, embedding and the uh, the context encoding final embedding. So we worked on this other approach called a poly encoder uh, um, in 2019 that we try to apply here for uh, document retrieval. And there the architecture is on the right. It's a, it basically tries to model the context in a more sophisticated way rather than just a single vector. It tries to capture that there's actually, you know, um, more going on in the representation there. So it encodes in M separate codes, M vectors. And then when you get a, a candidate document, you do it at uh, attention over those M vectors. So this is trying to sort of be an in-between what's known as a bi encoder and uh, what's uh, known as a cross encoder, where you basically append the, both the document and the context together and do a full transformer, which often works well, but it's incredibly slow because you'd have to sort of forward through a whole transformer for every document. But this is a kind of an in-between, which is still fast, but uh, works better than an a bi encoder. We also look at some other approaches, uh, which we call a uh, rag turn, where again, there's this long dialogue context. So we try to consider um, instead of the context as a single thing as done in QA as but as um, each dialogue turn uh, so that the people say separately and trying to incorporate that into rag and see if it improves things. And we also make a method which we call FIDRAG, where we um, augment the FID model with a DPR based retriever that's actually been trained already in the RAG setup. And this will allow FID to benefit from the end to end training of RAG because uh, FID doesn't backprop into the uh, DPR model. Uh, whereas FID actually can perform quite well compared to RAG. So it's possible this might have the benefits of both uh, models. Um, so we try this on the Wizard of Wikipedia dataset, and which has a, uh, both a seen valid and test set and an unseen valid and test set. And uh, we also look at a document grounded conversations dataset as well. So we have a bunch of normal metrics and we have this knowledge F1 metric, which measures the overlap between the model generations and the knowledge on which the human uh, grounded from the documents, which is annotated. And there's a, a rare F1 metric as well, uh, based on rarely occurring words only. We're going to look at a few different pre-trained models, BART T5 and um, Blender BART 400 million parameters. Um, and you know, the first question, does retrieval help for dialogue? Uh, the answer is yes. We get like a, a, a decrease in perplexity, first of all, uh, and an increase in F1. And um, we see that across both data sets. So you can see that, say, the comparing NUN and RAG DPR. And then the next question is, does retrieval eliminate model hallucinations or at least reduce them? And uh, it seems at least on automatic metrics using this knowledge F1 metric, right, which is the word overlap of the answer with the, um, the gold knowledge that is increasing uh, by quite a lot using either uh, RAG uh, or, um, or uh, FID. Um, and then those were automatic metrics. So we need to look at human evaluations as well. So we, we asked humans to annotate consistency, engagingness, knowledgeability, and hallucination. And uh, these are the definitions uh, that we showed to the uh, labelers. And uh, we see uh, quite large decreases in uh, the hallucination percent according to uh, annotators. So Bart large, say, hallucinate 68% of the time, whereas uh, RAG sequence and token are more in the 9 or 17% range. So we do see some really nice decreases in hallucination. 
um, and uh, knowledgeability similarly uh, goes up. Um, but meanwhile, the uh, consistency is similar and the engaging this we maybe lose a little bit, but not a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, we also see that the FIDRAG model is uh, working uh, quite well as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so increasing the number of documents isn't necessarily a good thing, at least in these experiments. Um, rag turn model uh, finds an interesting middle ground between the rag sequence and rag token. Uh, and uh, yeah, so um, the next question is, does retrieval help generalization to unseen distributions? So this is a, a set of topics from Wizard of Wikipedia, which aren't seen in the training set. And we actually see larger improvements in that case uh, from using the retrieval augmentations, which is um, a good sign. Um, uh, I'm gonna skip this one because I only have a certain amount of time. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, just to say the FIDRAG model actually gives a nice improvement compared to FID as well. So this is with the um, end-to-end uh, -end sort of training from the RAG of DPR. And we see this knowledge F1 metric goes up from 22 to around 30, say, using BART. Um, so that method looks interesting as well. Um, and yeah, so just show some example outputs of these models. So we can go back to the Thierry Henri example. Um, uh, and um, where where Bart thought that you know Thierry Henry played for England, uh, now the um, say FIDRAG DPR model uh, by searching through Wikipedia is um, saying he's the current manager of French club Monaco, and correctly saying when he was born, uh, he's actually not the manager of Monaco anymore, I think, but he was the manager. Um, with the dump of Wikipedia we had at the time, which I guess exposes another issue of retrieval augmentation that your your documents need to be um, up to date. Um, and in the last few minutes, I'm just going to talk about my most very recent work, which is a, a different approach. So which kind of um, instead of doing these retrieval augmentation methods that just have this like fixed database and use like a DPR model to uh, score we're going to like take uh search engines uh so like the bing api and try to use that instead to um do retrieval so there's a, a and we do that in our blenderbot 2 model which we actually just put out um maybe a, a month ago and it also has a long-term memory store which i'm not going to talk about uh, for remembering the dialogue as well. But the internet component, um, the way that works is um, we're going to make a model called search engine FID, which um, has like two transformers. The first transformer is going to take in the dialogue context and it's going to generate a search query, uh, which we're going to feed into a search engine API and return end documents. And then we're going to use those documents in a FID model as before. And we're going to compare that to RAG, FID, FID, RAG and stuff on the same database by uh, finding overlap with common crawl in our um, offline experiments. And so the reason why we might want to do this is because internet search is obviously a very well established uh, method these days, right? With a massive amount of work being put into it and a massive amount of um, training from uh, users using internet search, right? So maybe it's better to just kind of use this module instead of trying to train our own like DPR uh, retrievers uh, on our own with very limited training data, right? You compare that to an internet search engine. So this is an experiment we wanted to do and compare these. So the first step was we collected a new data set um, 
So we call this Wizard of the Internet. And we asked in the similar way to Wizard of Wikipedia, we asked two crowd workers to talk to each other, but we asked one of them to do internet searches based on the conversation. So you can see the internet searches here um, in this conversation. This is a human human conversation. And then to uh, reply sort of based uh, partly if it's relevant on the internet searches. So we collected a data set like this again on like all different kinds of topics and uh so we have around um 83,000 uh, utterances in a training set and this is a distribution there's a a large number of urls uh that are, are covered like uh, 11,000 domains and 26,000 urls in the training set and there's a, a breakdown of the validation set here. So it goes way beyond Wikipedia, which is what you know we'd kind of been using before. It's kind of covers all kinds of stuff on the internet that um, you know, from like recipe uh, websites to movie reviews uh, and blogs and so on. So there's a, like a, a lot of wealth of information uh, there that isn't isn't in Wikipedia, clearly because that's what people are using. Um, and yeah, so we can evaluate on the validation and test set of that data set now and can compare that model um, to, so we call that um, the uh, Wiz Internet Search Engine FID model uh, using say Bing search to uh, FID and FID RAG and so on. And we see um, perplexity improvements from using the uh, search engine over trying to train a DPR model ourselves on Common Crawl or on Wikipedia. And um, on human evaluations, again, we could compare the uh, uh, base transformer without this augmentation, so that's on the <coughs> bottom part of the slide, uh, versus using the Bing search, and we see increased consistency, engagingness, um, and knowledgeability, um, and less, uh, factually incorrect statements from this model. And uh, show a couple of success cases here uh, from this model. Uh, on the left hand chat, uh, I, uh, the human, which is actually was me, I think it's like a, a example chat, um, talking about the TV show Devs, which is a, a relatively recent show um and it correctly um talks about what it was about and then sort of the conversation shifts to uh, have you watched anything else recently and it you can see it does these uh, bing searches tv shows this year or tv show devs best shows of 2021 and then it picks out a, a show that it says it likes underground railroad and then can correctly talk about what's in that show and you know using the internet in this way of course it would be able to um uh, bring up, you know, completely new shows that just came out, right, that aren't in your uh, Wikipedia dump or something. And uh, similarly, it's also able to suggest a uh, pizza restaurant in Princeton here and even give its address and phone number correctly um, in the right hand example. Of course, it also has failure cases. Uh, there's a couple of examples here. So it incorrectly says that uh, Bodak Yellow was by Bruno Mars and not by Cardi B. I think because Cardi B and, and Bruno Mars also collaborated on some songs. And so that was appearing in uh, some of the documents. And um, it also gets the authors of the rag paper incorrect in the example on the right, um, although it gets the title correct, because uh, I guess it because it mixed it up with a, another similar paper. Um, and yeah, so that's a lot of information in this talk. Sorry, I wanted to uh, give you a flavor, both of the past of things we've worked on, so sort of where we were coming from with our story and, and some very recent results. And uh, yeah, so our latest things are about retrieval, augmentation, reducing hallucination in conversation, and uh, very recently using internet searches. And uh, I think there's a question there Though, you know, internet search, maybe it can be better because it's a very mature model, but is a text based interface seems actually a bit suboptimal for, for machines to me when you could be using vectors. 
So that's a question to the internet search giants. Could, could they have an interface that with vectors as well so that machines could use internet search as well as humans? And it's also issues of reproducibility of experiments because these internet search engines are always uh, changing and things like that. But otherwise, I think it's an interesting direction. And then finally, I wanted to emphasize um, the, I think you know memory is more than just document reading and going back to our RAM workshop and early work, I'd like to see models that don't just read documents, but learn from them and incorporate that into memory and improve their reasoning. And uh, I'm excited how much there is left to do and what's gonna happen in the next few years. Thanks.